What? Did the child really need a newspaper? I mean, I guess. I'm not going to discourage the kid from being interested in the news, but, you know. Welcome back to Extra Holiday Games. I'm Extra Holiday. I can't wave at you right now, but I can show you a picture. So, um, anywho. <laughs> Let's go talk to some people about these angry centipedes. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen these people? Sir? Okay, fine. Sir, have you seen these people? Over that way. Okay. Got it. Different island. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. That I got. Let's go. Fly on over there. Don't mind the pop in. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen these people? No? Okay. How about you, identical looking sir? That way. Okay. Well, I'm glad you had more information than your twin brother. Uh, so this is the market, huh? Guess I'll look around here. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen this person? No? Okay. Uh, what about... Ma'am? How about... Have you... Have you seen these people? Around the bars here, okay. Uh, these look like bars. Ma'am, have you seen these people? Oh. oh, them. Seen them hanging around next door. Hard to miss that awful bug on their clothes. Now I'm getting somewhere. Next door, got it. Thank you for your help. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen these people? Yep, I see him hanging around my store now and again. Really? I'm looking for anything you can tell me. Well, while I was sipping on a cheap cocktail, I heard him complain they were tired of being in the dark all day. Leogonia's... Leogona is always dark. Maybe they live down there. Leogona, got it. Wait, could you tell me where that is? It's at the very bottom of Jirgapara Lao. Keep going down, you'll find it eventually. Okay. Down we go. Lay Elguma. Down we go. We don't need to be using powers here. So we are falling. But we do kind of need to go over this way. Just fly on over. Really is far down there, huh? Drop a little bit. Oof. It's spooky dark around here. Wow, there's a whole town. Indeed. Yeah. This is, uh... This is, this is definitely the poor part of town. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. What? What? On. Got it. I gather some gems. Don't mind me. Just taking all your power gems, folks. Really not too big a deal, right? Come on. Okay. You know, I like the concept for this game. What if? What if? Falling. What if falling? <laughs> but like, everywhere. <laughs> That's really just what it is, right? We're not really flying here. We're more just falling with style. This does kind of look like Banga, actually. A little bit. The architecture. Which, you know, says something, I think. Excuse me, folks. Have you seen these people? That way. Okay. Well, I saw some shiny things the other way. Algona Island is over there. Okay. Just gonna grab some stuff on my way there. Whoop. And don't mind me. Is this Algona? Put on. I'm just trying to 
collect shiny things. There. Okay. Uh, more down here. Yes, I know. I know, cat. I'm just, I'm just collecting. You should, you should, you should, you should know. It's very important. You're getting stronger from this, so. Oh, hold on. I know. I know. I know, cat. I know. Just, just let me, just let me, just let me collect. Just let you collect. Because, you know, we are one and the same. You and I. Yeah, let's... <laughs> that's something. I think I've talked about it on the channel before. But, let's talk about... I think, because a cat, I think, is a great example of this. Like, a lot of games. A lot of games. Like, a lot of very, very successful games. A lot of very good games have silent protagonists, right? We're talking like your Zeldas and your Metroids and uh, I guess to a slightly lesser extent like Halo. Master Chief doesn't talk that much. Um, but like, a lot of games have silent protagonists. And, you know, the reason people always give for that is like, oh, it's so that the player can, you know, insert themselves into the role of the protagonist. But like, what kind of person just doesn't talk ever? Or like talks in grunts? Nobody. Nobody can relate to that. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, yes, I get it. Like, oh, it's a blank slate. So you could, you know, draw your own personality onto it. But that, that to me is harder than relating to a character like, say, Cat, who has a personality and, you know, is just likable. <laughs> You know? And, you know, you could you could argue that, you know, some people wouldn't like Cat. I don't, I don't see why. But that's... I mean, if you have a well-written character, then it's perfectly, perfectly easy to empathize with them. And I don't think you lose a whole lot when you're empathizing with the main character rather than specifically putting yourself in the role of the main character, right? Because what is the, what's, what's the purpose? What is the purpose of, you know, trying to, trying to put yourself in the main character's shoes? It's to be emotionally invested in them and what happens to them in the game, right? And to feel like, you know, you as a player, to feel whatever power fantasy they would be feeling. Uh, so... I mean, if empathy is the goal, then it would be, it should be just as effective. Granted, it's harder, but it would be just as effective to actually write a character that is likable and, you know, that a player could get invested in that has a personality rather than one that just, just doesn't, just doesn't talk. Like, it's... And, you know that the person just imprints their personality onto and see the thing is right even if even if you make a character that doesn't talk even just the gameplay a lot of the times will imply a personality like let's talk about samus because samus aside from a few rare exceptions and a game we don't talk about <laughs> um doesn't really talk like I was shocked when I played Metroid Dread and she had a couple lines, but she still only had a couple. Um, but hey, what were those lines? What were those lines? Those lines were basically like her being stoic and her saying, I'll take care of it. Right? She was just learning about things that were personally relevant to her, but she wasn't, you know, particularly. She wasn't like reacting emotionally. And that makes sense because even though, even though up until that point, Samus hadn't talked aside from that one game that we don't talk about, it fit with the personality that people had given Samus, right? People didn't say like, oh, I'm Samus, therefore Samus is just like me. No, that people went, oh, Samus, she's, oh, she's always alone. She's a very capable com combatant. She is this stoic bounty hunter character. And that's that's what people attributed her personality to, even though she didn't talk ever up until 
you know when. <laughs> it was... Actually, I think technically the first game she talked in was Fusion, but um, that was text. And, you know, that's that's still the still speech and still talking, but like... Anyway, you get the point. Point is, she started out as this... as a silent character, and then when they did give her speaking lines, or when they did give her speech, she spoke based on just the general consensus of what her personality was based on the games she had been in. Right, so... Even if what you're going for is a blank slate for the player to, you know, imprint themselves upon, to, you know, feel like they're in the role of the main character, it doesn't... <laughs> in that case, it didn't even really work, because how many of us are badass bounty hunters who are, like, stoic and don't really... who wouldn't flinch at seeing, you know, a, a giant freaking monster that with holes in its stomach that shoots spikes out of it and, and, like, launches its claws at you. That's... I'd freak the fuck out, right? Like, and I don't think I'm the only one. Like, sure, it'd be... Like, part of a power fantasy could be that, you know, that you're not freaking out, but... Yeah, honestly, it's... I think... I think writing Blake Slate characters just... in an attempt to garner empathy from the player by way of them inserting themselves into that role, I, I don't think it works. Right? Like, we can talk. We can talk about, like, you know, we have other, you know, just to use Nintendo examples, because those are what I know best, like, other characters also do this, also have this personality that people give them that is not their own because of, you know, just how they act in the game their actual physical actions and how they express those actions like for example another example mario we know mario does not have the same dour temperament that samus does because when he's jumping around he's making noises like yahoo yippee he's having fun <laughs> like mario enjoys what he does and that's not <laughs> It's really not a stretch to say that, because he wouldn't make those sorts of noises if he wasn't enjoying himself. So, it's really, you know, it's it's the same can be said with, like, Link. Link also. I think, I think in the only, like, I think if you have a new character, it's a little more effective because, you know, you haven't had games prior to that that have set the tone for what that character does. But even then, you know, you get partway into the game and you get a sense of what that character is like. Uh, Non-Nintendo example, Jack from Jack and Daxter. Uh, they later gave him a voice. Uh, I'm actually not too sure I enjoy what they did with him and his voice in later games. But in the first game, like... Even by comparison to Daxter, you get a sense for what his personality actually is. And it's not just the player themselves. Because Daxter, you know, is, he's over the top and he's loud and Jack is just kind of like, yeah, whatever, this is, this is my friend, you know, this is, this is my buddy. Right? He doesn't react too much to Daxter's craziness. And by virtue of that, you know, we can tell that he's a he's a pretty calm dude, at least in the first game. Like he's not he's not like you know super dour and serious like Samus, but he is he's at least decently calm. And yeah, and we get that we get that just from you know how he reacts to people around him. And the thing is, if he that game would not be nearly char as charming if he didn't react. Like, if he just had a blank face the entire time. Like, honestly, I think the blankest slates that exist in uh, as protagonists in video games are probably, like, the Pokemon games. Because that's a new character each time. And especially, especially, this is something I especially noticed in Gen 7. 
your character just didn't emote ever. It just they just kind of kept this like blank smile on their face. And even then, even then, that tells you something about the character. That tells you that this character is um, maybe a psychopath because <laughs> they're just not reacting in any way to these you know, kind of crazy things that are happening around them. And, you know, people telling them, like, you know, sad stories and stuff. They don't emote. So they're just like, it's like, they're just, they just got this smile forever on their face. Like they straight up can't make another expression. And that's, um, yeah, that, that says something. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> all this to say, I, I prefer characters that are actually written as characters in video games instead of, you know, ones that aren't. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I keep coming up with examples, but Sonic, Sonic, granted, Sonic was made to have some amount of personality, right? He was supposed to be like the rad 90s dude, had some attitude, but like, he didn't. He didn't need any dialogue to establish that personality, right? You could tell even just even just from the like impatient toe tapping animation he had in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, like the first Sonic game, you could tell that that's who he was. Like he's he wants to go, he wants to do things. He's not going to he's he's sassy too. Right? And he didn't need to talk to convey that. So it is entirely possible and it just pretty much it just it just happens right you just characters have personality it's just something they inherently have even if you're trying to make a blank slate they just have personality like i think i think i think the closest games have ever come to making the blank slate protagonist work is back when we didn't have the fidelity <laughs> to really really make expressions like from that at that point you can only really assume their personality based on the general themes of the story and their place in it um, and that's that's the closest you get to a character that doesn't actually have a personality and that's the closest you can get to an actual blank slate that a player can just say is, yeah, that's me. That's me. I'm me. You know, it's, it's weird. It's weird. You know, that even to this day, games will try to do that. They'll try to like suck the personality out of their character to make it, to make them more relatable. When in reality, that kind of makes them less relatable. You know, because we all have personalities, even if they're not the same, like there are no people out there who just don't have some sort of quirk to them. <sighs> Thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> uh, I just I just felt like I needed something to talk about while I collected stuff. Not that I didn't mean what I said, but like, it was, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it too much, just because I could, I feel like I could go on forever about how characters are written in video games or not written. Yeah. I mean, and you know, you know, another, another take on this is, as I've been explaining, right, a character's actions do can define their personality and often do usually do uh, when they're not particularly when they're when not a lot of care is taken into how they're written. But <laughs> uh, hold on, let me get my train thought back. I think the best way to use a character that doesn't speak is if you specifically want their actions to define their personality. I think that is the, that's the best way to do it, right? And at that point, 
then them not speaking is also going to be part of that personality. You know, right? You're making the not speaking a part of their personality. Effectively, you're making a character who would prefer to solve things with their actions rather than their words, which is a trait that a lot of characters that aren't necessarily meant to have a lot of traits end up getting because that's just that's the type of person in real life who doesn't do a lot of talking and even then they do some because you know you kind of have to in real life uh you have to communicate with others in some way anyway i mean there there are people who survive without talking ever but they still need to communicate to others in some way It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I think, I think, I think this is the case, but I think the, the idea that, you know, making a character relatable by sucking away any and all personality, I think that's a, uh, that's a trend that needs to, uh, maybe disappear for the most part from video gaming. And I think it is. I think most people are realizing that like, having a character with no personality doesn't necessarily make them more relatable. And I'm glad. I'm glad that that's happening because, uh, this character is kind of, kind of, kind of boring, right? You get the same character over and over again, basically. God, now I'm imagining, now I'm imagining a Pokemon game. Because Pokemon, like, they've added some expression to their characters as of late. I think probably the best example of this is um, Legends Arceus. Like, 8th Gen Sword and Shield, they did a decent job, but I think Legends Arceus is probably uh, the game in which characters have the most expressiveness, aside from, you know, Mystery Dungeon, I guess, where they actually talk. Uh, but the main series game where they have the most expressiveness. Uh, yeah, I would say Legends Arceus probably does it the best, but I mean, they're for the most part, I, I, of the blank slates, they are probably the most blank. Aside from, well, it's, it's a tough contest with Link because, you know, Link is a very, very stoic, <clears throat> aside from Wind Waker. Wind Waker Link has expressions, which is great. We love Wind Waker Link. Like everyone, like it's hard to say, it's hard to find someone who likes Zelda and doesn't like Wind Waker Link as their best, as their favorite Link, because he's, he's likable, you know? He has a personality and he's likable because of it. Like, even if he doesn't talk. There's another example of a character that doesn't talk and yet has a personality anyway and is still relatable because, you know, he's just this kid on a journey that he did not expect to go on. Well, yeah, I, 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 yeah, actually, I, I get it. I get it. You can absolutely get away with and it's, it's fine. It's fine if you want to make a character, if you want to have your protagonist just be Honestly, I feel like if there was a character in a game who could get away with being a blank slate, like a total blank slate, it's the protagonist. Because yes, you can have the player imprint on that character, right? They can insert their personality where other personality is missing. But honestly, that's that's a little bit of work on the player, right? That's that's some they that's investment they have to make rather than investment they feel when, you know, something happens to a character with a character. It is, you know, it's fine. Like, if you're not confident in writing a character, then feel free to not do that with your protagonist. But honestly, tangent, uh, but my favorite thing about the seventh generation of Pokemon, that's Sun and Moon, and to a lesser extent, Ultra Sun and Moon, because uh, honestly, I don't, I think there might have been, Ultra Sun and Moon actually might have arguably been worse games. I don't know. It's a, it's kind of a toss up. 
Uh, they're not definitively better, right? I'll say that. Uh, my favorite things about Sun and Moon were just the fact that there was an actual story that had actual personal stakes for characters, not your character, but for some characters, there were stakes that were personal, right? There were reasons to care about what's happening aside from, oh no, I don't want to die. <laughs> Which has been really the only motivation for pretty much any character up to that point. <laughs> and it's like, why are we stopping Team Magma and Aqua? Uh, because they're trying to commit eco-terrorism. <laughs> and they're doing it very poorly. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was all the motivation and stakes in that game were based on like, yes, this is, this is something that pretty much everyone would agree is bad. Um, but, you know, in 7th Gen, there was specifically uh, in talking about Lily and her mom and her brother and all that was involved in that, because that was a great story, right? That was, there was a lot to learn there and even some stuff to learn that wasn't even like part of the main game. But the fact that like, you know, Lily had, Lily and Gladion, that was his name, right? Lily and Gladion were, you know, they were in their household. Their dad left them, which is, which sucks. Um, and then their mom kind of went crazy. And so they left and that made their mom even more crazy. And hey, guess what? That makes, and their mom ended up being the bad guy uh, in the original Sun and Moon. First of all, spoilers, I guess. Um, I guess it's not really a spoiler. Anyway, um, spoilers, I guess. And also, I forgot what else I was going to say about that. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting, right? It's interesting. It's an actual interesting story. And you actually have character arcs like Lily growing to become more independent, which is fantastic. Right? And they, they did the same thing in 8th Gen too, specifically with How, and to a lesser extent, B. B? Was that? Bead. Bead. That's what it was. Um, yeah, How and B. Bead. Um, in 8th Gen also did this, where like they had their own character arcs. And the character arcs were related to you as the protagonist. You as a character didn't have your own arc, but they did. And that was cool to see. It was cool to see them continue that from Sun and Moon. Uh, oh yeah, I was going to say... Um, Ultra Sun and Moon has their mom not be the bad guy, which is, which was the weirdest thing for me because I thought that was such a cool story. And then it, spoiler for Ultra Sun and Moon, it turns out that uh, just, there's, it's a Pokemon that is the bad guy. You know, Pokemon without any sort of, doesn't talk, just does a thing and, um, oops, now everything's bad. kind of weird that's that's the main reason I'm saying that ultra sun and moon probably aren't maybe aren't as good as sun and moon gameplay wise they're better there's a lot more to do in the post game and um, there's some fun mini games like the surfing one uh, but ultimately I think I probably like the first sun and moon better that being said <laughs> thank you again for coming to my TED talk and uh we're going to show some people a picture next time. But uh, as for this episode, that's a wrap.
interesting combo I did there. 